everybody. Welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. My name is Tiffany and here on this channel I'm taking you along for all of the adventures here on the ranch. This morning I was looking for inspiration on what I could can today and I came across the idea somehow for a chicken pot pie but I don't have chicken so I thought beef pot pie but then I discovered in my freezer that I have venison so today we are going to do venison pot pie filling. So as I was researching recipes and how to do it and the spices and everything, I came across a recipe that looks very simple and also very delicious. I got this recipe from JennyGoff.com. I will link her below. I'm not affiliated with her, but I watch her videos and it all looks amazing. So be sure you check out the original recipe. I do believe that I'm going to have to um, deviate from the original recipe a little bit based on the ingredients that I have available to me. Also the fact that it's venison as opposed to beef. So be sure to check out the original recipe I'm going off of. It is at JennyGoff.com. And let's go get started. Okay, so I went ahead and prepared a bunch of our ingredients ahead of time. We have our carrots, celery, and onion. And also I didn't know exactly how much venison I had um, because I don't have a kitchen scale. So I wanted to see how many jars that the venison that I have will fill up. So I went ahead and divvied that up. I have 10 jars worth, so I've got a get out the big canner. I'm gonna get that one started because we are going to fill these jars with hot broth. So I just wanna get that started. But for now, the step that we need to take is to go ahead and create our broth. So the recipe calls for 12 cups of broth made from bouillon. I don't have any bouillon, but I had plenty of home canned broth so I went ahead and used that one and a little bit more because I have um, I have 10 jars instead of six. The next thing to add to our broth is Worcestershire sauce, however you want to say it. Worcestershire. And it calls for three dashes, but I'm going to go a little bit more just because it's super delicious. onion powder. The recipe calls for garlic powder. I don't have any. And also I ran out of fresh garlic. So I'm just going to use the last little bit that I have in this Costco jar and add it to the broth so that it has a chance to meld together with the rest of the broth. Now this pot 
pot pie filling is going to be a bit on the liquidy side when you take it out of the jars later. That's because we cannot can anything that has any kind of thickener in it, such as flour or cornstarch, arrowroot, things like that. So when you open your jars later on when you're ready to make your pie, or you could even just eat it as a stew, it's, oh my gosh, yes. Um, but you're going to want to go ahead and heat it on the stove slightly and add the thickening agent of your choice. And at that point, then it will become more of a gravy as opposed to a liquid. And that will make for your amazing texture of your pot pie filling. So I just made a last minute decision. I wanted to add a little bit more something. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of horseradish and also some apple cider vinegar. That will bring out an entirely different flavor level. Apple cider vinegar. This is going to simmer for 10 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get our jars filled up with our veggies while this is going away. Our recipe calls for a quarter cup of each of carrots, onions, and celery. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do to try to match that ratio real quick. Seems like a quarter cup is most definitely about a handful. And now we can see if we can fit about a quarter of a cup-ish of celery inside of our jars as well. Now we got close on that one. We got close. Next up is one bay leaf per jar. These ones were sent to me by my dad. Looks like I'm gonna have to bust out the store-bought bay leaf. A quarter teaspoon black pepper in each jar. Calls for half a teaspoon of thyme in each jar. I don't have any thyme, so I thought that basil, dried basil, would be a decent replacement. One teaspoon of salt in each jar. Now 
So it seems that I just had a major senior moment. I started filling up my jars with my broth and then quickly realized that, and then not so quickly realized that I was not recording. So I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you the rest of the jars that I need to fill up with the broth. So you guys go ahead and let me know if I'm the only one that feels this way, but there is something so satisfying about filling up a jar full of solids with that broth. Deep bubble, mix it all around. We have our jars all filled up. They're all at one inch headspace. They've all been debubbled. So now I'm going to go ahead and just clean all the rims, get the lids on, and while they're still hot, get them into the hot canner. I did end up with a lot of extra broth, but I am definitely not worried about that because it smells so delicious. I would be willing to bet that one of my family members, if not myself, will most definitely use that. Maybe with some kind of a soup or a stew, we could go ahead and grab some of the meat that I have canned up in our pantry to go ahead and make something absolutely delicious with that leftover broth. We have our canner all buttoned up, fastened, and it's already really hot, so it probably shouldn't take as much time as it usually does when I do a cold pack. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for it to start steaming. We are going to process this at 15 pounds of pressure for an hour and a half. 
All right, the time has finally come. Our pot pie filling is ready to come out of the canner. It was going for an hour and a half at full pressure, but with this big canner that I have, it takes an exceptionally long time to heat up and also to come down from pressure, but it's time. Let's check it out. When you're using an all-American canner, you want to make sure that you are loosening and tightening the, it's not a grommet, the fasteners in a crosswords motion to release the pressure evenly as opposed to releasing it one side or the other side. Also, you want to make sure that when you lift the lid, you lift the lid away from yourself because this thing is still super hot, full of steam, and it will burn your face. Looks good. This is what our venison pot pie fill filling is looking like. We're going to set it here on the counter. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to disturb it. We're going to leave it for 24 hours or so. So we have our venison pot pie filling here. It's boiling away. I just took it out of the canner. It looks amazing. The only thing I'm wondering if maybe the type of meat, the venison, maybe it broke down a bit more than other meats do. That's the only thing I can think of with this kind of spider webbing type of fatty tissue but we'll go ahead and just let it cool here for the next 24 hours. We'll check it out, we'll keep an eye on it, make sure everything's good, and I'm sure it's going to make a delicious pot pie. So there we have it. Successful 10 quarts of pot pie filling, and we are ready to go. Thank you so much for joining me today here at the Hamakua Homestead. I look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. I hope you have a wonderful day. Aloha.